This is the Woman's Hockey Life Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Women's Hockey Life Podcast presented by the Hockey News. I am Ashley Muzon, back guest hosting today, and I have two incredible guests with me, which is a new thing for us. So they are the members of the gold winning USA Women's Master Team for Ball Hockey. Please welcome Leanne Dixon and Pamela Bilger. Thanks so much for coming on today. So I want to get right into it. Um, so I want to start by asking you both individual qu questions, and we'll start here with Leanne. So how did you get into playing hockey? Oh, uh, <laughs> hockey or ball hockey? Are we going to? In general, so hockey and oh. then led you to ball hockey. Yeah, so uh, my mom's uh, born and raised in Massachusetts, and she was a Bruins fan uh, growing up. And so when I was a kid, she put me on skates as early as she could get me on skates. And yeah, the rest is history. So I'm technically an ice hockey player um, historically, uh, but if it's a version of hockey, chances are I've been close to or I've played it at this point. So I played field hockey in high school and college, uh, as well as one year of ice hockey in college. And yeah, I, I found ball hockey through uh, a field hockey teammate, actually, um, said this is right up your alley. You should give it a shot. And uh, that was in 2013, 2014, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's been a while. I mean, what is the transition like going from playing field hockey because the ball is heavier, the stick's a little bit heavier, and then playing ball hockey and, like, the stick's lighter, ball's lighter, not on grass, not wearing cleats? <laughs> What's the, is it a big difference to you? Uh, so I, having the ice hockey background was definitely helpful in transitioning to, you know, the fact that we're running rather than skating um, and the whole field hockey aspect of it, you know, being used to running with a ball instead of uh, skating with a puck, like those two interchangeable pieces helped. Uh, however, you know, you, you create habits with certain sports that maybe don't carry over as well. So, um, you know, I had apparently for a little bit of time, I would roll my wrist a little too much um, as a field hockey player, which didn't translate very well to ball hockey and uh, a couple other quirks here and there that I'm still trying to iron out that I don't necessarily want to give away. Um, but yeah, there are definitely uh, learning curves for sure. Um, when, you know, thinking of those two different um, sports comparatively. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And then what about you, Pam? How did you get your start into playing ice hockey or ball hockey? I actually never played ice hockey. I cannot skate. Um, I was a field hockey player similar to Leanne. Uh, when I graduated college, there wasn't a lot of opportunities to play field hockey as an adult. And I stumbled upon a sport and social league that had floor hockey and they had co-ed teams. And I joined as a free agent with a bunch of other free agents. I think our team name was creatively enough, the no names. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we started playing together and I still have some really good friends from that team, but like Leanne, there was a few transitions I had to get used to, uh, letting the ball touch your feet it took me, I think a whole season to get used to that. I think when I started to play, I also, my stick was about two feet too short and I almost lost my teeth on a few occasions. So I, after the first season, I really started to get a better grasp of the sport and the difference and adjusted the equipment and my style of play to this new ball hockey or floor hockey sport. That's awesome. Yes. I've um done a, done a women's clinic and I had a young lady out there who was a field hockey player and her stick was way too short. And I was like, Oh, you might want to get a little bit, you know, a little bit longer there. So you don't have to bend down so much, but I understand like that's what more what you're used to is bending down. And, you know, I could see it right away. As soon as she started trying to um, go for the wrist shot, she would really get down low. And I was like, I wish I could get down that low. I can't even do that. And she would really get her shot was effective but it, like since she was using more of her arms it would only go so far and I was like if you could just you know maybe work it back a little bit and then she was like yeah and, you know she just kept going in that sweeping motion I was like you'll, you'll get there <laughs> you'll get it I'm still but, trying to get there <laughs> yeah it's definitely hard to unlearn those things just because you were so conditioned to do that sport yeah it's a lot different absolutely a couple yeah. close calls though when I learned how to, <laughs> to get a larger stick <laughs> For sure. I could only imagine. So how many years were you both playing um, 
ball hockey, or I should say before you started playing ball hockey, what made you want to try out for the um, women's masters team? So um, just to back up again, my, the sport was introduced to me through a field hockey teammate and she had been playing for a few years um, pickup and she had the opportunity to play on the uh, women's now, as we know, the women's um, senior team. Uh, and she had encouraged me to try out for the women's senior team that year. They were going to uh, Pam, where was it? Uh, where in Switzerland? Switzerland? Switzerland. Yeah. Zug. Zug. Yeah. And I believe it was 2013 or 14. Uh, and I was definitely ready to go and try out. Um, the evening before tryouts, I was in a flag football league and I um, accidentally, you know, sustained my first uh, pretty serious concussion that night. And I was not able to then go out and try for the, um, the senior team. Uh, and then a few months later, I found out that there was a, na a master's level team and then I was, you know, well enough, I think it was a few months to a year later, um, I was well enough to try out for that team. And I was not a an eligible player um, age wise, but they do have things called waivers. So I was brought on as a waiver player after trying out for and making the team. And so I actually started my career on a master's team as a waiver player. And we competed in um, Banff, uh, was that Alberta? Yeah, in 2016, 2016, okay. yeah. So that's how that kind of unfolded for me. Nice, nice. And what about you, yeah. Pam? A similar start. I started playing on the senior team in 2009. Mm. Um, and I played a few of the senior tournaments. And then in 2014, it was the first women's master's tournament. I believe it was in Tampa, Florida. And... Actually, at that time, a lot of the women on the senior team were over 35, so they were eligible for the master's team. So a lot of us just decided to play both because we were enjoying the sport and enjoying playing with one another. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I could only imagine just with Leanne's story, suffering a concussion. <laughs> You're way better than me. If I was getting ready for the trial, I'd be like, in bed by nine, must have my pasta, my water. <laughs> You're like, nah, we got we got sports and this is running into my football team. I got to go out and get on that team first, get play my game. And then I'm going to go to this tryout thing and make it work. And it just didn't work out that time, but that's awesome. I'm glad that you do a lot of different sports. That's pretty cool. So just leading up to last year's worlds in Czech Republic, I believe it was. So as you guys are both gearing up for worlds, getting back out there um, and Obviously, I was on the prize, gold medal. We don't want anything less. Like, what was running through your head? I guess I'll start with Pam. Like, what was running through your head going into that tournament? I was really excited. that We had a, a new mix for our team. There was a lot of players that were new to the Masters team and then a core group of players that had been playing for a few years. So it really was a nice mix, and it, it felt special from the beginning. I think the team really clicked and the coaches did such a great job getting us prepared. So there was a level of excitement from from when they announced the team all the way through to the last game in the Czech Republic. Nice. nice. What about you, Leanne? I really have to echo kind of the same sentiment. Uh, there was definitely new blood uh, at this point. Uh, it would be a couple of master's tournaments that I was fortunate enough to compete in. And this time around, uh, the energy was just a bit different. And there was, uh, yeah, there was like a little buzz. There was a little excitement kind of surrounding uh, preparing for that tournament and just getting ready to go out and, and compete. Were there any, like, I always like seeing when there's different teams at any level that have, like, a hype song or, like, something that gets everybody going before they hit the floor for any game, whether it's the first game, last game, before semifinals. Was there, like, a hype song or any type of pregame ritual that you all did before getting started? Captain Pam? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we had a few things. Um on the bus rides there to the rink, we did have a little bit of fun, right. a lot of music, um, just really to set everybody at ease. But then right before the game, um, Beth Marhefka and um, Ann Gertz, they led us through some breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. And we did this before every single game just to relax everyone and really get focused on what the task at hand was. 
And I thought that was critical and became a really poignant part of the team. Like everybody looked forward to that, getting around the net, having that breathing exercise, getting relaxed, getting ready to play. And we had a little mantra, which was uh, let it go, let it flow. So that became synonymous with the uh, tournament and the overall championship. That sounds awesome. Definitely. I feel, you know, the younger kids out here don't, they're not on the breathing meditation side yet. I'm getting ready. They're more like, oh, we got to go. We got a lot of energy. I'm like, yeah, but you got to get that mindset right before you go out there and get yourself kind of in the zone and ready to go and eyes on the prize. I think that's amazing. So just going into the gold medal game, was the energy still the same or was it more like a serious, like, okay, well, we made it, like we're ready to go. Or was it just the same? Like, Hey, we're here. We know we're about to take this home. How was that bus ride over? Like, can you, can anyone describe, like describe the day? Did it feel different? For me, it felt a little bit different than times in the past. Um, we actually rode the bus with Team Canada to the to, to the game, which was a little awkward. Um, but I, there was just a, a sense that this was the time we were going to win from when we woke up, from when we got on the bus till we took the floor. It just felt different for me than it had in the past. There was a level of confidence that we could do it this time. Not that I didn't have it in the past, but I think nerves always were there. Like, can we? Because we never did. And this time I just felt like everything was the right place, the right time, the right players, the right coaching staff, and it was going to happen. Nice. That's awesome. And what about you, Ann? Uh, yeah, it's hard to describe. There was definitely something in the air that morning, even getting up and, and seeing team breakfast and uh, just everything that goes into your preparation before a big game uh but there was definitely something that that did feel different like Pam said it perfectly it was just like you know there's something in the air there's something about the way you felt about your preparation that was a little different than previous tournaments and yeah it was definitely a, a little bit of an awkward bus ride um not in that you know anything was um out of way out of the ordinary but you could tell like there's a little bit of tension nothing like crazy just regular competitive tension uh being put on a bus it was a double decker bus so it was great so we had one level for our team and you know another level for team canada and you know it was just two teams that were really prepared to go out there and battle so and you could feel it awesome i was just about to ask okay wait a minute back it up you rode on the bus with team canada oh my goodness i was thinking like okay Team USA on one side, two and two, and then Team Canada, and you're just like looking like, mm -hmm. all right, this is about to happen. <laughs> like, that is not what I was expecting to hear. Just go, especially going into such a serious game. I think with all the breathing, breathing exercises, and like all the mantras, I still would have been like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my. Like, I think I would have been like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> that is not something I was expecting to hear. But I'm glad it wasn't like a a weird vibe. It was kind of like, Hey, we're on this level They're, you know, on another level, we're good. That that's a lot <laughs> easier to deal with for sure. Oh my goodness. I could not. Yeah. I'm just thinking about that situation in my head. No, I could not <laughs> at all. So moving forward to the end, I mean, you both did it. The team did it. The coaching staff, like you said, everything just felt right. It felt aligned and it was your year. So what was it like, Leanne, getting um, the gold medal handed to you when they were handing the medals out? Oh, uh, it was like, um, it was almost like a sigh of, of accomplishment. Like, you know, all this hard work, all this time that you put into your passion, it's still, you know, your passion and you love to do it. And to see that culmination of that, all that hard work and that sacrifice, you know, um, we largely, you know, do what we can to get to these games and to get to these tournaments. And, you know, nine times out of 10, they've been, you know, on foreign soil. So all that and all those emotions kind of leading up to that, to that medal, like being, you know, placed around your neck, it was definitely, um, it was a great feeling, but at the same time, you're, you're realizing that this is the end of, of, you know, a goal that you had set for your, for self, for your teammates, for your coaches. And, and it's here now, you know, it's, it's been achieved. It's like, so 
just kind of yeah a sigh of of contentment like it this we did it you know nice that's awesome I could only imagine and what about you Pam how did it feel for you uh, it was certainly a sense of accomplishment of uh, also a sense of relief <laughs> uh this was my ninth world and I have a few participation medals a few silver medals I believe a bronze medal but it always felt like I didn't want to be finished playing this sport until we were able to achieve that ultimate goal, which was the gold medal. And it was just such a sense of, you know, elation to finally you know, have that achievement and being able to do it with players and friends that, you know, I've played with for the last 10, 12 years. It was really just a sense of, of community and accomplishment, but then after the tournament, like what I realized was how big the gold medal really was to the ball hockey community. So, so many people reached out to say they watched and they were excited and so proud of us. And from my over 40 men's league teammates to people I played with on my first worlds in 2009, like everybody in the ball hockey community really embraced us. And we really started to feel how, big the moment was and how much the medal meant just not to the players that were there but everybody in the ball hockey community yes that's amazing I love that you pointed that out because I was going to say it's also an inspiration to younger girls and even boys out there that are chasing a similar dream because obviously there is no pro ball hockey league like you can you know go into college and play ice hockey and things like that but there is no pro league for playing ball hockey and if kids are out here and they've never touched ice and they've only known ball hockey it is nice to see um, a team of you um, all with the talent level I watched the gold medal game and I was like oh my gosh they're gonna do it like this is awesome and just seeing I really liked how they kept the camera on because normally they'll cut things off and they'll be like, all right, they won. Like, good job. Like, we're done now. <laughs> like, you know, we're cutting off the broadcast. But I really like that they kept the camera on to show you all getting the medals. And then the part for me was not only that everybody was so excited once they were handed their medals, obviously, but seeing their teammates embrace them and all of that. And then also the coaching staff seeing some coaches take some hugs in with some player. I was like, this is such a beautiful moment. This is amazing. It was really inspiring. Honestly, it really was. Even for somebody like me who just enjoys watching and playing just at the level that I play at, it was really an inspirational moment for sure. And like I said, there are definitely younger kids I know looking up to you all and saying like, wow, like I hope I can do that one day. So that's awesome. So is there another memory other than getting your gold medal and winning um, and having fun on the bus. Is there any other memory that sticks out that was like, wow, like I'll never forget that. I think one thing that helped me out um, in particular this past worlds was uh, our coach, um, Sean Mulcahy had said in a previous camp, you know, when we were preparing to, you know, once we get there, just, just focus on, you know, everything else that we have going on, you know, in life, you know, that was our week to just be hockey players. And that was like specifically poignant for me um, just because I had just become a new mother and I, you know, had never ventured into that life chapter before. And, and ball hockey was always something that, you know, it, it has been something in the fabric of my identity for the last several years. So when he had said that, I was like, you know what, I, I can do that. That is something that I can you know, come back to and really try to focus on because it's what I owe my teammates in that moment. And that was, it just spoke volumes as to where kind of my head was at going into the tournament. And it just helped, yeah, focus, like have laser focus and be there and really enjoy the moment 100% with the women that I was playing with and, um, you know, the friendships that I forged. That's awesome. And congratulations on being a mom. That's amazing. Oh, That's such an amazing accomplishment to, you know, have your child and then go out there and say, like, look what mom can do. Like, I'm out here <laughs> playing hockey. That's awesome. Sure. That's <laughs> awesome. And what about you, Pam? Is there a memory that sticks out to you? I, you know, right after the last couple of seconds ticked away on the clock when the entire team ran to the net, um, we were, it was just a giant hug. And you look around the circle and, you know, there's players in tears and hugging and, you know, it's players who were there for the first time and players that had been there since 2007. 
and just like looking around and seeing all the different emotions like that moment will stick with me forever as like the, the brightest spot of, of the whole tournament. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, just amazing. And like I said, to anybody who hasn't watched it, I mean, that game was incredible to watch. It really was. So just shifting a little bit, just in general, um, and this is for either of you to answer. So what is your favorite aspect? If you could pick one, I know it may be hard, but what is your favorite aspect of just playing ball hockey in general? Uh, for me, it's the friendships. Uh, over the years, I've really made a lot of great friends who have become friends off the rink. Um, and it's just a sense of ball hockey really is a sense of community. And you, you really do see people come together outside of tournaments and outside of hockey. And, and there's real relationships there. Um, so that's probably the strong, the, what keeps me playing. I think I retired now three times, but I keep coming back because I love playing with, with my, you know, playing hockey with my friends and, you know, really having that sense of community. Nice. And what about you, Leanne? I mean, I'd probably have to echo the same, you know, sentiment. There's people that I never, you know, would have crossed paths with uh, formally. And just to know that there is a community out there that's supporting you wholeheartedly and, and basically a home base that you can come back to. And everyone's like, well, we were watching you, you know, and you know, it's a great tournament. And, you know, just letting us know, like Pamela previously mentioned, like how proud, you know, all our support systems were, you know, they were watching at 4 a.m. or whatever the time difference, you know, may have been uh, at, uh, during the tournament. And just knowing that it's, it is, you know, more than just our team, but we do have that whole community and that whole um, support system behind us, just rooting for us all the way, for sure. Nice. So how would either of you encourage more women to play the sport at any level, whether it's just pick up once in a while or just joining a league? Um, how would you what would be your advice to them if they wanted to start or how to get started? Probably the best re resource for women's ball hockey is UDubs, the United Women's Ball Hockey Foundation. Uh, there's a lot of information and resources that that group has that people can utilize to find ball hockey in the areas that they live. But there's ball hockey for all levels, people who never picked up a stick before as well as people that come from different sports like Leanne and I did with field hockey and transition to ball hockey. So there's lots of great opportunities. I would say USA ball hockey is another resource. Um, there's, there's a lot of information on their websites on where you can play ball hockey, as well as now we have, we're going into the second year of the women's uh, NBHL program. And with that program, you have players from all levels on, on teams and it's, it's a great way to get started and you know start to feel comfortable with the sport. Nice, nice. And Leanne, did you have anything to add? <laughs> Pam took it all. That's pretty. Much <laughs> I was just gonna say she covered all the points in there. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Couldn't have said it any better. That's for sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, we will definitely be linking that to anybody who may be listening and may be getting completely inspired by these two amazing women just on where to get started. Um, you have the United Women's Ball Hockey Foundation, also the um, National Ball Hockey League, and then USA Ball Hockey. We will definitely have all of that linked so that everybody can follow along with that. So as we are wrapping up here, we have the Women's Hockey Life signature question that we always like to end the podcast with. So with uh, Leanne, I'll just go um, with you first. So if you could go back and tell yourself as a young girl, um, if you could go back to that time frame of just little Leanne and when Leanne was kicking butt in all different sports back then, what advice would you give her? Oh, wow. Um, it's a loaded question. It's a loaded question. That's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you asked her first. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, little Leanne, playing all those sports. Oh, wow. You're on the right road. Uh, and, you know, stay open and stay stay wide-eyed. You know, be continue to be amazed and be open to every possibility that comes your way because you never know when you know great opportunities are are you know bestowed upon you so just keep looking for for opportunities nice nicely put and pam i know it's a little question <laughs> it's a it lot. Is. Um, i would just tell myself to appreciate all the moments um someday it'll be your last game 
and you want to be able to look back and say that you really took advantage of everything you could and appreciated being a part of it and being able to, you know, be involved in all these sports for such a long period of time. Nice. Yeah, I think that's both beautiful what you um, both put together. So as we just wrap up here, just thank you both so much for being on our podcast today. Again, this is the Women's Hockey Life podcast presented by the Hockey News. So um, we already have mentioned where everyone can follow along if they're looking to getting into the game. And if you want to support the USA Women's Masters team, they will be competing again and defending their title in Buffalo. I believe it's late August is when that tournament will take place. So up in Buffalo at the Riverworks, which is a gorgeous facility. So I'm hoping to make it up there to support you all in person. I think that would be amazing. But yes, we will have everything linked. Um, USA Ball Hockey will definitely be posting times and game times so we can watch and follow along and support the both of you. So thank you. I really appreciate you both being on today. Thank, thank you. you so much.